People deluded, I'm back again. I'm here with a special guest. He's going to be a full-time scholar for Arsenal this year. Well, next season when it does start. He's been at the club for a number of years. Kay, how you doing, man? You feeling good? Yeah, I'm good. How's your quarantine going? Oh, it's boring, man. I mean, if I'm not doing workouts in my garden, not talking nonsense on YouTube, making videos, there isn't much to do, man. What about yourself? How are you keeping yeah. safe? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just carrying on my training, just trying to keep my mind focused, really. Mm. What sort of drills have you been doing to keep ticking over? Uh, I've been doing a lot of ball mastery, my gym programs that Arsenal was sending me, and finishing. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. In turn, you mentioned Arsenal, what have Arsenal sent you? Um, have, I, have you been in const constant contact with Arsenal and your teammates during this period? Yeah. Yeah, we have a uh, we have two group chats. We have for, we have one for our, like technical work where we send it, and our coach tells us what we need to improve on. So we video us, get someone to video us, and do like the technical drills that they set us. Mm. And yeah, and we have nutrition workshops on Zoom as well, things like that, keep mm. us healthy and fit. Has there been anything in terms of psychologically? Like, is there any help psychologically? Yeah. For yeah, we have a um, psychologist who like, sets up meetings on Zoom as well and he asks us questions and we do activities that like, keep our minds off it and stuff like that. Mm. What have you been doing away from football during this period? Uh, the most important thing is with my family, spending time with my family because once you go back to Arsenal, I'm not going to get as much time to see them because I'll be in every day. So you're cherishing the moments, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What was I going to ask you? Now, you're going to be a scholar next year. How does it feel to be, you know, all the hard work that your parents and yourself have put in, you know, your parents dropping you at every, every game and whatnot and every training session, you yourself having to perform to put up with the pressure of, you know, we don't need to sign this player because we've got Kay here. who can do what is needed. How did it feel to sign that scholarship? Um, I was very delighted. It was a proud moment for me and my family. And yeah, I really enjoyed the feeling, knowing that Arsenal wanted to take me on further. Mm. Was you nervous about if you would or wouldn't get it? Um, well, I was confident, but there's always nerves with, every, with anything you do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Paint a picture for us, man. How did they tell you you're gonna get a scholarship? Was it by text? You know, did you was you called for a meeting? Was it did it? Would was you just told it on a football field? Because many people don't. We don't really know how this how it really works. Um, it was a Thursday evening after school. I got told I have to come in for my meeting. Mm. So I went to the meeting, and the per and Luke Hobbs had me in the meeting room. The first thing they said was they're delighted to given me a scholarship at the club and it was a proud moment for me and my family and yeah it was sat us down had a talk gave us the papers and that was it did you ever consider that your future lied away from arsenal hello can you hear me oh it's gone again can you hear me yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I think we had some yeah, difficulties. Can hear you. Did you ever consider your future away from Arsenal because of the nerves around the scholarship? Um, no, not really, no. You just had tunnel vision that I'm going to achieve my goal. Yeah. That's fantastic, man. And I mean, I'm happy you did that because, I mean, you're, you know, no word of a lie. You're a, you're a young man who's got a very mature head on their shoulders. I love the way you play football. I think we were speaking off air. You've got, what, 25 goals or something this year so far? Prior to it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, twenty-five. So you live, bleed, you live, bleed, and and sleep goals, and I really like that, man. And as as a as a fan, I'm really keen to see what you what you've got to offer him next year because I've seen what you can do at this level, sort of thing. But you know, obviously, to get a scholarship and you're going to be a full time player for Arsenal. But way before that, you had to obviously start playing football, and you go from humble. Yeah. When did football start for you? When did you find um, you, this was a sport that you love, or you know, I'm playing this. I think it was a time when my brother took me to the park mm. and we were just playing football. It was like the first time I've ever played football and from that day I just loved it. Mm. And I just continued to play football. Then I joined the Sunday team called TFA and we used to go to tournaments. That's when I 
realize what position I wanted to play as. Goals was basically my, it was basically my name. <laughs> I like that, man. I like that. Exactly. And yeah. How long was you Damn. at the Um, From about under, under sixes to about under eights or nine. Okay, okay, okay. Until so you, I got signed. So until you got signed, what? So I should. Yeah. You get signed permanently when you're when you're nine in academy, right? Yeah, nine. Yeah, cool. But from before that, you can you know train and do your thing. And what, yeah, yeah. When did you? Is Arsenal the only club you've ever been seen? And or when did you first start making scouts aware of you, or they started becoming aware of you? Um, like just before signing time, so like just before under nines, mm. I had the option of Arsenal or Chelsea, but because my mum had to work her job and it was hard for her to get me to training to um, Cobham. And Arsenal was closer, so we thought maybe we should just go with Arsenal to save all the hassle. Mm. And that makes sense, man, because at the end of the day, people got bills to pay and things like that. And people yeah. can't really see how hard it is and the sacrifice people have to make to for players to even have a, a chance to be professional footballers. It sounds sad to say, but for every one of you that gets a scholar, there's many people that go through the same thing and they actually haven't been been unsuccessful in getting a scholarship. So I'm I'm very proud of you and what you've done. I'm very happy that you know you and your mother and loved ones can have a good a good little bit of a memory sort of thing so far. And by God's grace, you go and build some more. But talk to me about Chelsea briefly now. Um, how was it like training at Chelsea? What was it like? Um, it was very good because there's like a lot of people I knew from outside of Chelsea that were at Chelsea at the time. Mm. So, for example, I had Brooke. I knew him from before Chelsea. And he was at Chelsea at the time. So I had a good relationship with some of the players there. Mm, it makes sense, yeah. man. It makes sense. Did you... Was you kind of... Because obviously at the time, you're quite young in it. Maybe not necessarily old enough to comprehend that, you know, your mum needs to go somewhere closer so you can... You need to go somewhere closer so your mum can do what she needs to do. Was you upset to leave Chelsea or that, you know, Chelsea ain't going to be a thing anymore? Or was, it, was, or was it a case of, you know, I'm training with Arsenal and Chelsea... Arsenal's there, don't really matter. Um, I feel like I wasn't upset. Mm. I felt like maybe I should make the job easier for my mom because mm. it was a bit hard for her. And sometimes it's not always about you, like the thing about the family as well. It's a very mature answer, man. Whereabouts are you from in North? Like, I, I'm assuming you're a North Londoner because you said, yeah, you know, that one's closer. I was raised in Hornsey, but I, I live in Brent, right around Brent Cross now. I mean, Westland. I, I wanted you to, I wanted you to succeed, anyways. But because of the fact that you're an actual North Londoner, you need to be the one to do it, man. Because I'm seeing too much South Londoners in the Arsenal environment, and too much East yeah, Londoners. Man. I need a North London guy to come through, man. And you know, God willing, work hard. You never not happen for you, my guy, man. I really like to see that. So now, obviously. If we go forward a bit um, into the scholarship sort of stuff, was it disappointing? I mean, I assume, you know, a lot of the of your age group, you've got you, you've got Zayn, Mon Louise, you've got a, you've got Zach, you've got Flores, you've got Patino, you've got Brooke, you know, you've got Moro, you've got many whole heap of players, many sort of players. Now, a lot got given scholarships, arguably more than normal years. Was it yeah. upsetting seeing some man not get the scholarships? Because there must have been some of your teammates or friends that just didn't get one. And you still have to kind of yeah. beat the season, but still have to kind of play. Yeah, it was upsetting because there was two of two of the players that didn't get it that I was very close with. Mm. Like even one didn't live too far from me, he used to go to power league, things like that. Mm. And it was upsetting. But I guess it's just the football industry that we're in in this day and age. Mm. It's ruthless. It's, it's, that's one thing about football. People don't see from an early age just how ruthless it is. And especially playing at a team like Arsenal, you must have had to prove yourself every week because every week there must have been a try list. Like, what did it feel like seeing a try list that was a striker? Like, what did that make you feel like? It's just made me think to never put, the, never put your foot off the gas. Mm. Always keep Wait. going. Never get complacent. Never think you're too good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that answer, man. And... and what would you say is your strongest asset? Because, you know, I, I think it's... I actually don't think it's anything to do with your football. Your football is great, don't get me wrong, my guy. But it's your, I think you've got a superb mentality in the way you've answered, the way when I speak to you. You're very... An, an old head on young shoulders. But, you know, you're you. What would you say is your best attributes? I probably think my mentality. Mm. 
because there's times where my friends have said, all right, let's go here. But I'd be like, no, nah, I can't. I've got training or a match tomorrow. Mm. Things like that. Being in the wrong crowd, basically. Yeah. It's just having, it's just seeing, being able to see that end goal and, and remind yourself. In a footballing aspect, though, what would you say is your main strengths? Um, I would say my strength, finishing, and strength, finishing, and my link up play. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And if you had to pick, what would be your weakness? Um, heading. Mm. Have you always been a striker? Um, no, I played in midfield and on the wing. And what brought a change? Like, what changed from playing central midfield in the flanks to, you know, being the gunman you are up front? Um, I just felt like I had to nail a position now. And I thought the striker was the best option. Mm. In the most humblest way, did you feel you as the best striker in the squad? Or had the potential to be the best forward in this in in you lot squad. Yeah, I had the potential, but at one stage I was never like one to, they would talk about. But I just have to keep getting my head down, grafting. At the end of the day, you might not be that, but look where you are now. Look where you're going, my guy. That's all that matters, man. How's it been for you at club level, though? And I have to ask you this because you know, obviously, everybody's life is at stake. That's the most important thing. But you's having a great season. You signed your scholarship. You bagged 25 goals at a point. You know, you've made your under-18s debut. Fair enough, it's on the flanks, but you've made your under-18s debut. You lot, um, won, 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 is it a Premier Division Cup? You won it last, you, you won it last year, right? Or you lost to Chelsea? From we, got, we got to the final. Yeah. yeah, you lost to Chelsea, but you got to the final again against City this time. And unfortunately, you can't play that. It does sound a bit, a bit bittersweet. What's your feelings on the season? How has it gone from a, collect, from a personal point of view for you? Um, I feel like the season has gone well because like, from the start, even from pre-season, I feel like I hit the ground and running because like, I was very proud as well because like, in the under-15 season, I wasn't at my best. I had a lot of niggles, injuries, and I think that's that was my main growing stage. Mm. So I didn't really feel as sharp as I did in the under-16 season. Mm. And, yeah, That makes sense. And from a collective point of view, as a team versus yourself, how do you think it's gone? Um, as a team, I think we've grown as a team. That we, no one's singled out. Everyone mingles with each other. We have group chats, talk. We play FIFA. That like, even away from Arsenal, we do things to make us better. Mm. Mm. And that's one thing I get from you. Like, I mean, you lot. I do think there is a, there is a lot of people of you lot that are going to be scholars. But I get that there's togetherness. Like I remember, I was at Haylen. You lot played Chelsea. And honestly, it felt like you lot was it was Arsenal versus Chelsea's first team. I'm seeing tackles flying in. You know, is it is it Luigi Gaspar? Luigi. He's yeah, he's a madman <laughs> in the middle of the park there. I see you throwing your weight around. I see you lot showing your techers. And it, you really got the theme that you lot would fight for each other in a footballing sense, really ride for each other. Does that make you confident next season? Because, you know, I, I think a lot of you are going to get chances in the under-18s and, and, and have to play because we've got such a young squad. Yeah, I feel that that is the case I feel like we will we will bring what we've brought from the under 16 season to the under 18 season mm. but it would be I would like to see how we cope with the second years because even though some of us have played with them a lot but also some of the some of people from the squad haven't played as much so it would be good to see what was the what's the biggest what's, what's been in fact before I ask you about the biggest shock at under 18s level when you played there and you've got a lot of talented teammates. You've got you, Mon Louise, Amari, Zach, um, uh, this is Zane, um, you know, Moro. You've got a bag, bag of you in it. There's a bag. Everyone that's getting a scholarship is, is great in it and they've got potential to do things. Who's the most talented for you? Who's the one you looked at when times are going hard and he's just looked at head, head and shoulders above everybody else? Or you just, you just look at him and you go, baller? Amari, technically yeah. gifted. Um, and I would say Zane, that is, yeah. it's, that is very hard to get past him. You yeah, have to do solid. a lot. He's solid. He's got pace. He can bring it out. I do think Zane's got a good chance of making it at this club. But again, it's down to you lot to work. You made your under-18s debut now. 
What was your feelings on that? Because like, what shocked you the most? Was it the pace of the game? Was it the tactics? Was it, you know, was it the, the fact that there's no real time on the ball at this level in comparison to under 16s? What, what shocked you? Um, I would say tactics was one of the main ones because as an under 16, like if they had a corner, like this would test your mentality. Like, do you know your jobs? Do you know what you need to do? And the coaches will look at, they won't just look at how well you do on the pitch by like dribbling and things like that. They'll look at you from the other side of the game. So like tactically, do you know when to drop off? If we're one nil up, there's three minutes left. Are you going to keep going bombing forward? Are you going to sit and sit as a team and be a team player? That also plays a big part in football. Mm. And I would say the pace of the game is a lot quicker. Like you have to know your next pass. Like you have to think ahead, basically. You think in the future. So you've got to be more calculated versus doing things on Instagram. Yeah. That makes sense, man. Um, how did it feel playing on the flanks, though, at 18's level? Um, well, I liked it because it gave me a chance to see what I need to improve on. To see, because I could, who knows, I could be playing there next season. Mm. So it's good to get that little insight of what it's like to be playing against older boys stronger, faster, and see what I need to work on to be able to beat them one-on-one, things like that. Mm. That makes sense, man. Obviously, when I, when, I look, when I look at you, I see someone that's very calculated in how they, in how they play. Have you had to, do you feel like just looking at the season ahead for under-18s when it gets back, do you think there's certain things you've, you, you have done at under-16s level that you feel, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do it under-18s, or things that you can do but have done less and you think, okay, under 18, I'm going to do a bit more of this. I'm going to try a bit more of this. Has there, is there anything like that? Um, yeah, I feel like through the under 16 season, like my movement, like to get in behind, I feel like I'll try and bring that into the under 18s. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about it. That's what I would bring. That makes sense, man. And I definitely think you could cause a lot of trouble for oppositions. Now, You've scored 25 goals or something like that uh, um, prior to the season being cut off, right? Yeah. Yeah, for me, that shows how good you are. But I don't be- genuinely don't believe that someone, does, someone scores that amount of goals if they don't set goals, uh, ironically, goals at the start of the season. So did you have any targets? Well, better word, targets. What, did you have any targets you wanted to hit at this season in terms of, I want to get 20 league goals, I want to get these assists, I want to get this scholar, I want to whatever? Yeah, I had a few targets. My main one was to hit 20 plus goals and I hit 25 of the season not even being finished Crazy. and 11 and 11 assists can you hear me? yeah yeah you said an, an 11 assists yeah and another goal was to obviously earn my scholarship which mm-hmm. I've got um, I think that was it not a big goal, had another one. And also, yeah, to make my under 18 debut this season. So you now, solid achieved team. it. What are you looking forward to most at under 18's level? Is it the fact that you're playing and training all day and at, with the, well, not with the first team, but basically in the same f- um, facilities as the first team? Is it, for me, if I was you, I'd be ex- hell of excited over the FA Youth Cup. That would be the first thing I would be excited about because I yeah. think Arsenal could win that. What excites you the most? Probably being around, seeing what it's like, like seeing first team players in the gym, mm. seeing what they do, what it takes. And obviously, there's a lot of opportunities. So, like, who knows? I might go there, get an opportunity, and I just have to be prepared and take it. Be prepared and take it, yeah. Is there any strikers you try and model your game on? They don't have to be at Arsenal. Um, both Ronaldo's. Mm. Why? And I, I know why, but. And they people listening know why it's, it's it's Ronaldo Lima and Cristiano, but why? The old Ronaldo, he was just a killer in front of the ball. Anything mm-hmm. that comes, it was just in the back of the net. And Ronaldo now, he just shows everyone that you don't have to be talented to become one of the best in the world. As long as you have the right mentality and work hard, anything's possible. Mm. Obviously, as a fan, you know we've got 
at first team level, we've got Lacazette and Aubameyang, two great strikers. In and around the first team, you've got Eddie, you've got Tyrese, you've got Balogun soon to join them. And then you've probably got, and Sam Greenwood, and you've probably got you as the youngest, purely because you are the youngest. Do you look to lean to these older heads, whether it could be Sam, Balogun, Tyrese? Do you lean on them for advice? Do you speak with them? Do you take bits of their games? Because you're all different strikers. Do you take bits of their game and think, yo, I need to add this to my game or I could look to be better at this or, yeah. Um, well, I speak to Flo. He tells me about some stuff that I would need to bring into my game mm. when I get to under a level. And yeah, that's about it, really. It's decent, man. Hopefully, hopefully you, you and, and Balogun, because I would love to see you get 20 freeze minutes, and I'm sure you would too. Hopefully, you two. I think you two would be quite work quite well together. To be fair with you, I really, I really do. Um, is there a sort of player you model your game on, though? Um, I would say Lewandowski. Why? Again, I know why, but why? Um, he's a killer in the box. He's a killer in the box, and he's very smart. What? Back his movement. Just about to ask you that. So what's, in mo- what's the most important thing for you as a striker? Because obviously goals, I'd say goals obviously win the games and goals are what you're judged on. But what is it for you? If, if goals weren't a thing, what would be the most important thing for a striker for you? Um, probably. Don't take your time, man. I, I've purposely, purposely asked a difficult yeah. one, man. You're a striker. I have to pick your brains. <laughs> Probably the way I influence the game by like, taking defenders away, creating space for midfielders, and probably being a vocal point at being the top of the pitch, mm. linking it, Do things you feel- like that. So just on that, do you feel, um, do you feel, I've always wanted to ask strikers, you mentioned influence in the game and I purposely asked you that to ask you this. Do you feel um, there's been games where, you know, you've played amazing and not that it's not that you haven't scored, but you've managed to play as well as someone that scored or assisted equally. Has there been games playing up front where if you was honest with yourself, you didn't have the best of games, but you scored them or got an assist or something like that? Um, yeah, Blackburn, semi-finals. I don't think I had a great game. Could have done better. But I scored a goal, which was the most important thing. Mm. Yeah. What sort of striker, like, what sort of striker are you? Like, are you a striker who likes to, you know, go back with your back to goal and fight the centre half for who's winning the ball and flicking it on? Do you like to run in behind? Do you like to do what Lacazette does and drop deep and, or, or be a Firmino or a false nine and drop deep and get involved? What sort of thing do you relish? I like to like get in between the lines of defenders mm. and running by, mm. but I can hold it up as well. Mm. And that's one thing I've seen from you. I mean, I I don't know how much you work on it, but you definitely look like you worked on making on timing of your runs because at times I think you're always on the last shoulder and you don't see you and, and you're a big guy as well. You don't see you until it's too late, sort of thing. So how how much yeah. have you worked on that? I've always wanted to ask you that. Um, well, my coach, he saw that that was something I needed to improve on because he used to come to our under-15 games. And then as he took us, as he took over on under-60 season, from the very start, he just constantly, constantly did work on my movement. Mm. And I feel like that's helped me a lot. Definitely has. You can see it. So it's a testament to, to whoever's taught you, whoever coach that is. I wanted to ask you as well... Um, You know, going through the academy, you've played at several, I assume, several national and international tournaments. You know, you've got to see a lot of things. What's some of your happiest memories being in Arsenal Academy? Or, you know, it could be, it don't have to necessarily be winning stuff. It could just be being coached by a certain player or whatever. Um, I think my happiest moments have been Singapore. Mm. That country is that I just felt privileged to have been given the opportunity to go because not many people get to go places and I'm just proud that I've seen what it's like to fly and stuff like that um, another place would be when I went to Spain Menorca mm-hmm. and I won top goal scorer I was very proud mm-hmm. yeah have you been called up by England yet? Um, not yet hopefully hopefully next season 
it'll fall into place. Have you been with any camps or it's just you've just not been involved in any? Not been involved in any. So minor, man. It will all come, man. They ain't going to be yeah. able to ignore my guy next season when you're smacking up these under-18s and banging in goals, man. I genuinely feel that's going to happen. Have you spent any time out injured in your career? I always want to ask players this. Has there been any injuries you've had? Um, yeah, I've had Osgood, Severs oh, and Hampshire. And knee, and a knee injury. How serious was the knee injury? Um, I think I was out for about... I'd say about three months. You gotta tell us, man. What was that like? How did you cope mentally? Like, what was that like? How did you get that injury as well? Um, I think it was a tackle, and I landed awkwardly, and that my knee went the other way. And my, yeah, then when it's was it one of them where you feel it at the time, or is like was you jogging and then you're like, nah, something's wrong here. I got up, started running, and then I started tweaking in my right knee, and then that was it. And the other injuries? Um, hamstring. How did you do that? Was that just a pull? I think so, yeah. That was just a pull. How long was you out with that one? That one was on and off because like, it, it would come and go. Then so what? I think it was, like, it was like two months, but it was like, on and off. Like Sometimes I could play fine, sometimes I couldn't. It was a weird one. Mm. Did you feel, and in particular your knee injury, did you feel you learned a lot about your body? And also, did you feel when you came back and you got over these injuries? Because I, I, I hurt my ankle when I was younger. And one thing that scared me was, you know, the, the pain healed, but it's like I was scared to pass the ball and that it's going to happen again. Was there that mental barrier for you, in particular with your knee injury, and in that, oh, if I try run, if I, you know, extend my foot, if I try shoot from this, you know, I'm going to get hurt again, sort of thing. And was you kind of scared with that? Nah, I always just. It was just as the game came that like, whatever happened happened that like, because normally when you get scared of like a tackle that's when you normally get injured. Mm. So I kind of thought of that and I just went into anything. Really. Mm. Finally, I wanted to ask you my final question: What would you say is the strongest asset you need to be a professional footballer or get to the scholarship stage or whatever? I say that because many people say different things. I believe it's, it's you need mental capacity to just see stuff. Certain people say it's communication. Certain people say it's physical and technical attributes. But for you, what would it be? I would say mental capacity. Because mm. right. you have, there's people that teachers at school, they'll be like, you need a backup plan. And sometimes you think, like, like really, this is something you love doing. Like, mm. You should feel like you're going to go all the way and strive. And then you've got people that, try and influence you to like go parties stuff like that and you just have to be strong-minded and just be like you've got a game or training the next day so you can't attend how, how's like that, that. Been for you? how's that been for you because obviously the lockdown you know you can't party but what you're you're technically year you would have you finished year 11 you know this would be a great summer this is a summer i remember my my one where everybody wants to do everything obviously prior to the lockdown was you having to turn things down left right and center because obviously you're not just a player that plays in academy that goes to school. You're looking to be a full-time footballer now, a professional footballer properly now. Yeah, I've had friends say, should we go out? Like, even though like, there's nothing to do, but like, should we go and do something? Mm. And I'll be like, I'm training. Like, I'm training. I basically train every day. Yeah. I, rate that, man. I really rate that. I rate that. Have you found um, your friendship circle or the people you keep around you get smaller as you're progressing? Yes, most definitely. It's got a lot smaller. I think I have about four friends from school. Wow. Wow. It's not about, you know what the positive is? It's not about the amount of friends. It's about what friends you actually have, man. And it seems like whoever these four people are, men or women, they're men and women of integrity, man. And they're people that, you know, unless they do anything else, you can keep around you and trust them, man. Because as you're making progress, the, the, the circle of trust is going to get smaller for you, as you know, man. Yeah. Yeah, but, man, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, with you. You've dropped a lot of nuggets in relation to Arsenal. I didn't know that you've been at Chelsea for a period. I didn't know anything about your injuries. I didn't know a lot about the mental aspect of the game from someone in your position. And you've really opened my eyes and you've probably did a lot for, for a lot of the viewers, man. So, you know, they, yeah. I appreciate you for coming through. And, you know, I, want, I hope you and your family stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you. You too. It's all right, man. Take care of yourself, my guy. Take care.
All right. Bye.